Hello everyone, this is lesson 9 of Machine Learning Zoom Camp Session 6 and in this lesson we will train, uh, we will select the final model. So far what we did is we trained three different tree-based models. First we trained a decision tree model, so that was our uh, model, so we trained it. So this is the parameters we selected, we thought are the best ones, and this is how this tree actually looks like. So let me copy this. And again. again. So this is our best decision tree model. Then we did something similar with random forest. I think this is our best random forest. I think here we wanted to leave it at 200. So let me put it here. Uh, this is the best random forest model. Let me take that. So this is our best random forest model. And then finally, we have our best XGBoost model that we also train here. So what we want to do now is we want to evaluate these three models on the validation data set and select the best one. We probably already know what is uh, the best model. We already saw it. Let me do this anyways. So first we will evaluate the predictions so far decision tree. Consolidation. So let me move it here. So this is the performance of our decision tree, 78.5% AUC. Then for random forest, um, I'll just copy paste this and replace DT with RF. So it is 4% um, better than decision tree. And then let's do the final one with random forest. Here we do model predict and we use D validation. And now let's compute its uh, RC. And this is 1% better than random forest. So now what we want to do is uh, we see that XGBoost is the best model. Now we want to train the final model and we want to use the entire training data set. So we want to use this data frame full train. Uh, we want to use it for training our final model, and then we want to evaluate this final model on our test data set. So you see here we have the status, so we need to... So first let's reset the index. I don't like that it's not sequential. Then what we need to do next is we need to get our Y. Train, so it's our status. Here it is text, so status default, Let's type int values, it's our old train. And then we need to delete it, delete the status column from, from our data frame, old train. So we did that. Now we need our dictionaries, dictionaries full train. So to dictant records. Now we need to turn these dictionaries into vectors. We use dictionary vectorizer for that. Dictionary vectorizer sparse false. And then we get our full train, full train feature matrix here by doing fit transform of these uh, dictionaries. And then I think we already have a Y test. Yes, we do. So we only need to get the feature matrix for our test data set. So let's get our dictionaries test. So here we have data frame test. Here X test, which we transform our dictionaries. Let's run that. We have our feature matrices and now we need to create uh, this T matrix with um, this full feature matrix, then label will be by a full train, and then feature names will be our dictionary vectorizer, get feature names. So this is not T test, but this is T full train. And likewise, we need to also to do this for test, X test. Actually, we don't need labels here. 
because we will not use this for testing. We will evaluate it outside of XGBoost. We will use scikit-learn for evaluation, so we don't need label here. We remove it. Okay, now let's get these parameters and train our final model using full train. So these are the parameters and let's train it. So we have our final model and now let's evaluate it. Model predict detest. We have our predictions. This is how the predictions look like. Let's take a look at the first 10 values. So this is how our prediction looks like. Now let's compute the RUC score. Y test. And we see that our AUC score is 83%, which is quite in line with what we had previously. So it's a little bit worse by like a fraction of percent, but it's fine. So it's not a big deal. So here we conclude that our model didn't overfit. It did quite uh, well. So it generalized quite well to unseen data. And even though we extensively used our validation set for tuning the parameters, we didn't accidentally overfit. So the performance on the test data set is reasonably good. Okay, and this is our final model. Turned out that XGBoost has the best performance. Yeah, usually it's not a surprise to me when I hear this XGBoost often turns out to be one of the best models, at least for uh, tabular data. So for tabular data, meaning when what we have is a data frame with features. For this kind of data sets, usually XGBoost uh, tends to have better performance than any other models. But the downside of this is um, it's more complex, it's more difficult to tune, it has a lot more parameters, while let's say for random forest, it's just two important parameters that we need to tune, so it's a lot easier, I would say. And for XGBoost, it's more parameters and it's, uh, it's easier to overfit with XGBoost, but can get better performance with this. Okay, so with compared three models, we then uh, concluded that XGBoost was the best one. We trained the final model and we concluded that the performance of this model is good enough on the test data set. And what we will do next in the next lesson, we will go through all the materials we covered here and we will summarize this session. So see you soon.